Hi guys, this is Sign here back again with another video review for Gain i5 Digital Audio Player. Pardon me if I pronounced it wrong. It's C A Y I N. And this is a, a digital audio player we have in front of us. It's been long since I've done any video review. Um, this is I'm doing this video review again after a long time. I'm grateful to Kain and Paul from HeadFi for giving me the opportunity to review this uh, i5 digital audio player. Here you go. We have the digital audio player in its full glory. It's a beautiful piece of unit made of metal, as you can see over here. A brief introduction about Kane. It's a Chinese company founded about 20 years ago. And it, they were mostly pioneering in the sound uh, equipment related equipments. Um, but from 2013, they introduced their first digital audio player. One we're, the one we are reviewing today is the Kane i5 digital audio player. They also have N5 and N6. This is the first Kane product uh, I'm, I'm going to review. I haven't reviewed the N5 and N6. From the price point of view and the feature set, they're not much different, but it looks like the N6 is the flagship model. We'll have a look at the player in more close details now. Some key standout features uh, are being listed on the screen. You can pause the video to see what's the Kain's i5, uh, the sales pitch, and why this digital audio player, we should be buying it. Um, just if you can pause the video and have a look at the key features. And we'll proceed to the unboxing section now. The i5 box, as you can see, has the similar high-res audio here. We have seen this moniker in the other Sony ZX2 digital audio player as before. So it means it's part of the audiophile high-res, high-fidelity audio system. We're looking at the unboxing because presentation is very important to me. It's my perspective again. Um, we'll quickly go through it without wasting much time because we have seen very similar packaging from other digital audio players. I've already highlighted the key features of this DAP um, in the previous screens. Um, I'll highlight the specs later. We won't go through these much detail. I would say very clean presentation uh, compared to a digital audio player. Not very flashy. And we have the box over here. So typically unboxing, you can see the i5 in its full glory, which is on the top, which I quite like compared to how the iPhone has been presented with the bits of documentation on the top. And then you take it off and then you see the actual phone underneath. So let's, we'll have a look at the player in details. So let's look what they giving as part of the entire package. So as usual, it comes with screen protector, which is very common, which, which we have seen almost all digital audio players comes with extra pair of screen protectors and manual. It also comes with a lovely leather feeling case. I, I think it's leather, not sure. There's nothing mentioned as genuine leather anyway. And also it comes with a USB-C with two USB-A cable, which is excellent. It's quite handy because since it's a USB-C based port. Now as part of the uh, review unit, uh, we got the USB-C to SPDIF cable. I'm not sure if it's there in the actual production packaging because there was some um, gripe among the HeadFi community that they're not including the cable and it's around 60 US dollars separately buy this cable and also it comes with a micro usb to usb c adapter which is nice to have it in the package so you have everything in the box that's about it that's what comes in the box let's have a look at the player so again you can pause the video now and look at the specs on the sc screen these are the key specs i just don't want to go through them over a minute so the highlighting specs which i think we should discuss is is the size and just do a quick size comparison with my iPhone over here. So this is the iPhone 7 Plus on the left hand side and the i5 on the right. As you can see the i5 is about the size of the iPhone 5. Uh, just a bit thicker I guess compared to the iPhone 5. 
and in terms of its weight it's 196 grams it feels rock solid it feels very well built on the back it has got this carbon fiber based uh, soft backing not a metal backing this has been done i think to make sure the wireless signals go out of this module fairly well there's no much interference because this is a quite cloud centric dap standard tft screen we have seen in other slab based digital audio player because it's running android it is a touch screen based uh, digital audio player and has similar form factor as as you can see in other android digital audio players it comes with a non-stepped uh, potentiometer so which it means is you can't feel the the volume uh, scrolling up and down is very smooth i like this kind of volume implementation rather than the stepped one on the right hand side we got the play pause and the standard uh, previous and next track and there is a micro sd card over here it supports up to 200 gb and currently there's a 200 gb micro sd card it supports i guess any format ntfs fat xfat any of them which is really nice in the bottom you can see it has usb c port i think which is the first time in a digital audio player which is a forward thinking from kane so they are making the devices future proof pretty well appreciated on the left hand side there is the power button and that's about it it's made out of aircraft grade aluminium which is dual aluminium which we have seen in the Astellan Kern AK240 as well which is becoming quite a standard because of its the material strength and the durability of the product and one of the key specs is the AKM AK4490 chip inside which is a 32-bit implementation over here which is pretty good so it can support 32-bit high fidelity audio so let's have a quick look at the interface over here so just a disclaimer at the time of this review uh, the firmware version is 2.0 and it's running Android 4.4 KitKat so the i5 chose to use a Hebe skin, Hebe based player. So you can uh, get from the app store for iOS and Android. It's called H-I-B-Y. Um, it's a audio player and it's pretty good. So they partnered with them uh, to do this skin interface on top. And as you can see, they're very much cloud centric. What I mean by that is they're giving a lot of focus on wireless music, which is LAN based or Dropbox based, which is new. I haven't seen on other digital audio players plus it has integration with other third-party services like Spotify play music and title as you can see internally it has got 32 GB onboard memory and as I said it can support up to 200 GB uh, micro SD card which is fairly good so all your music can be at in one package so on the top we have the headphone ports on the right hand side we got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the left we have a line out there is no balanced out which is another right drawback compared to the n5 of gain which is there another digital audio player and there is one home button over here so this is not a typical android user interface the back button is implemented throughout the software there is no quick menu button where you can see list of apps open to get to the android bit of the system you have to pull the drop down menu and go to settings then you're greeted with the similar uh, familiar android 4.4 interface otherwise everything else you he see here is a highly skinned music player um, skin on top of android 4.4 which is good the sony zx2 was a pure raw vanilla skin rather than a customized skin there was some sony customizations on top though there are just few weird things since there's no dedicated back button like if I go to any of the menu items inside the back button is not uniform sometimes it shows up on the right over here sometimes it's implemented actual as a back that's just a bit uh, inconsistent when you're using the player but once you've used it for a certain amount of time I guess you'll get used to it so we'll qu quickly look at the settings if they're anything different than the other um, 
players digital audio players we have seen so they have the standard uh, music player settings like the like um, like the gapless payba playback etc and some UI related settings which comes part of the Android ecosystem and it has the gain settings on the quick toggle over here they support only high decibel and low decibel gains the the spec based ratings are on the screen you can just pause it to have a quick look it supports bluetooth interface and wi-fi wi-fi is needed for all the cloud-based services and then on the left hand side you get the third party applications and uh, there is the equalizer in this case all my video reviews i turn off the equalizer make it disabled so quickly scrolling through the music settings it is the standard music settings we have seen in other digital audio players there is nothing key or significant worth discussing as part of this review because I want to keep this short and focus more on the audio capabilities of the digital audio player. And it can do native uh, DSD. So basically it can play most of all the formats. And as you saw in the previous key standout features, it can uh, so it, it has support to native SSD um, ISO and also DSD encoded ISOs, which is fairly good. And it supports uh, DSD64 to 128-bit uh, DSD audio files. One thing good about this is in the home dashboard, you basically get all your uh, settings, music, everything in in one fingertip, which is pretty simple. You don't have to go through layers of screens before you can really reach what you're trying to look for. So they are all there in the home screen with the album, artist, genre, as well as the folder view on the top, as well as the wireless controls, and also the currently playing music, which is fairly excellent. And the search is also here. So the i5 or Kane is claiming the battery usage is about 10 hours, 10 to 11 hours, depending on the music you're listening, whether it's a DSD or it's a high res music, or you're listening to MP3 or how much wireless streaming you're doing. So with a bit of wireless streaming from Tidal and Spotify, I was getting about uh, nine to 10 hours, which is fairly accurate to what they're claiming to. The charging takes, uh, I guess, a significant bit of time. It takes to about five to six hours through the laptop because it doesn't come with any charger or adapter. But leaving it overnight will do the trick because this is not an iPhone and you don't keep it on all the time. So as part of the video review, the gear used for listening purpose is, as you can see, the HD6XX, which is the same as the HD650 Sennheiser. Then we have the Campfire Audio Andromeda over here, which is top of the line in your monitors. Then we have Odyssey's iSign 10. So these are also top of the line planar magnetic in ear monitors. Then we got the FIO or FIO F1 uh, budget friendly in ear monitors. They're excellent, by the way. Then we got the Apple AirPods. Most people's on the go wireless headphones. I would say they're not that bad, but they're pretty expensive for what they sound like. And then on the right, we have the Sony XVA Z5, their flagship uh, in-ear monitors. So as you can see, I've used a variety of or a huge range of headphones as part of this review. So they range from a completely over the head uh, open back headphone, plus they're varying from very expensive top of the line headphones to something a mid-tier as well as a budget friendly headphone so we'll see how the sound uh, is in the next section so in the last section we looked at the headphone gear used as part of the review now we're going to look at the other source gear which i've used for comparison purpose as part of the source gear i know we're not exactly comparing digital audio player to digital audio player. It's not <laughs> apples to apples, but it's specifically this comparison is purely for sound perspective and which will also give us the DAC comparison perspective of this player, as well as the other DACs, which is used as part of the comparison review. So on the left hand side, we have the i5, which is the main unit for video review here. Then we got the uh, i5 IDSD micro black level 
for purely for sound purpose and IDSD Black Label can play uh, native DSD so has an amp built into it and it will give a good comparison between the various gain settings we have seen in the i5 as well as the IDSD and on the right it's an odd man out we got the cipher cable from Odyssey in this case the cipher cable works only with iOS based devices uh, why I've included this because the cipher cable is a DAC amp on its own and in this case the cipher cable unfortunately I couldn't use with other IEMs I had to use only with the i signs so I signed 10 as part of the headphone review so maybe not that fair of a comparison but it will give a unique idea such a portable DAC um, in a cable how how can it compete with these uh, standalone digital audio players and standalone desktop class DAC so we've come to the final section of the review which is the sound which everyone is uh, eagerly waiting for to see how this hi fi co sound compares to other in here DAC as well as a small portable DAC solution so before we start uh, just a few things let I want to make sure the equalizer is disable and all the sources over here also you can see this is the trusty app for my source uh, for the cipher cable as well as the IDSD DAC over here and I use the Onkyo um, digital hi-fi play playback player on the iOS store and that's also equalizer has been disabled So how the review has been done is I've loaded the same songs and same quality songs in both the sources. As you can see, I've used Adele's uh, Live at the Royal Albert Hall concert and this is a FLAC file. So I've loaded the same songs in both the sources and used for comparison purpose. So first we are going to look at the background noise or the sensitivity of this particular i5 player and comparing with the other DAC. Uh, options we have over here so the first headphone in terms of reviewing the sensitivity or background noise is the campfire audio andromeda as you can see here and it's a pretty sensitive IEM um, generally all BA driver IEMs are pretty sensitive that's what I've seen maybe I'm wrong um, and and this IEM has a bad background noise you can really hear it and it's not a subtle or something you can dismiss when the beginning of the track when there is this blank space it's not just dead bit silent there is a really high uh, background noise and i tried various settings on the dap uh, which are over here on the um, uh, sorry on the music settings and none of them actually helped so it was set at a low gain um, so it was set at low gain option and tried various digital filter options and still it was pretty bad on the background noise. So when you're listening to, for example, the Dark Side of the Moon DSD tracks, at the, some of the pauses or, or the emptiness of the, uh, of the music, you can hear the background noise, which is not that pleasant. Now quickly comparing to the IDSD which has got this turbo mode so that it can support sensitive IEMs and also it has specific dedicated IEM math settings with a very sensitive IEM this this particular campfire audio Andromeda was like dead silent there was no hiss there was no background noise so the winner in this case is clearly the IDSD black over here so with the cipher cables case um, I couldn't compare with the campfire audio because it works only with the iSign headphones or any Odyssey based headphones as usual the DAC is tuned to have no background noise and all so it's not a fair comparison to include as part of the background noise review so it's opted out for this particular review next uh, the comparison is in using the iSign 10 using the standard normal 3.5 millimeter cables without the cipher uh, cable in this case the background noise was hardly audible not sure why which is pretty good in this case so there was no background noise the next one was the sony xba z5 which had some background noise in it but not as much as the campfire audio one so basically if you have a sensitive piece of IEMs or headphones be aware um, don't use it with this i5 unless they fix this with some software update but I doubt that so now let's look at how well it can drive the headphones
Um, as per i5, they have given that it's quite versatile. It has a very high good amplifier built into it. So we'll quickly go through the list of headphones I used and see what sort of volume level was required to drive them. So it was about volume level 40 for the Sennheiser HD6XX. But even though I crank up the volume, I, I could never get the same depth I got through the iFi DSD Black for HD6XX. I guess the amplifier section on the DSD iDSD Black is far better than the i5. With the campfire audio, the listening level was around 2320, uh, which I would say presumably high compared to someone in a normal listening terms. I generally listen to a bit uh, high volume level, not sure because of my audio loss or something on my ear, but 23 is pretty good and it gives you a full depth of sound across the entire range on the campfire audio, which is very nice for a top of the line in-ear monitor. So similar sort of audio gain settings uh, was used for the iSign 10s as well. Uh, it was almost around 30, but still again, I could never reproduce the sound or, or I could never get the sound it was coming from the cipher cable. So I was always trying to look for that, that optimal sound, but it, I could never get it to the 3.5 millimeter jack. So this is something of a concern raised in the iSign Head 5 forums where people are complaining that you get the optimal sound when you use the cipher cable. Not sure why they designed their um, in-ear monitors as such that which works only with iPhones. So with the Fire F1s you could drive e easily at an 18 volume level. With the Fire F1s are very versatile. They can be um, coupled with any high-end DACs or DAPs and they still produce very consistent sound being an entry-level in-ear monitor. So the i5 is, has implemented a Burr Brown analog volume chip for their amplification part. I would say that f to conclude on the easy, easy to drive, it drives fairly well, not as well again as the i5 uh, IDSD Black over here because it, it has a very different amplifier and it's more of a desktop class DAC amp uh, combo over there. Now in terms of the music used as part of this video review and as I said the music has been loaded into the other sources as well for the comparison purpose. So you can pause the video now and look at the list of songs I used for listening or reviewing this particular i5 device and thus each of the songs are highlighted with the codec being used. Is it a 24-bit flag or if it's an mp3 or a DSD and this will give an idea what genre of songs I chose for uh, the review purpose. I don't want to go through each one of them and describe their quality, but I'll give a overall sound summary section uh, for each of the headphones used in this case and some of the codec related uh, sound qualities. So overall, uh, it, it has a warm tonality in the first instance, like you pop any in-ear monitor in or any headphones in ears connected to the iFi, you, you'll feel that, okay, it's warm. like. When I used the AK Astle and Kern 240, uh, the first thing I got was, okay, this is pretty neutral and uh, there was not much warmth to it. But in this i5 case, you'll feel that, okay, it is, there is some warm tonality in the across uh, sound signature. But the sound is uniformly balanced, I feel, so across the spectrum. I don't have the FIO X7 with me here. But uh, FIO X7 was not this warm, like th I remember ZX2 very well. It, it also has a warmer tonality, but um, it is more on towards the neutral side, but the i5 doesn't feel neutral at all. The treble is not as harsh as we have seen in the Cypher cable. Um, with the Cypher cable, the prolonged listening, spe specifically in the iSign 20, is a bit hard because sometimes the treble is a bit harsh and you might need to EQ through their ODZ app to make sure um, the treble gets suppressed. Otherwise the treble is not that pr pronounced um, in the i5. As a result of that it has a musical um, feeling to the music coming to that. You can go for prolonged listening. It's not analytical so if you're trying to think, look for deepest musical separation inside the songs I don't think so you can get it through the i5 but it, it is more musical. Um, but I think the ZX2 was a bit more enjoyable compared to the i5 from my feeling. I don't have the ZX2 at this moment to do a side-by-side -side AB comparison. But from what I remember, and I listened to the ZX2 extensively, um, 
it has the warm uh, feeling pl plus it also has the neutrality to it which the i5 seems to be lacking the sound is a bit laid back compared to the idsd and the cipher cable we have seen in this case where the idsd or the cipher cable is more aggressive as i said the cipher cable is very treble aggressive but it has a very good mid bass and um, uh, sub bass is also at a very well distributed level but also the IEMs are also playing a big part because it's open back in ear monitor first in its class but with the i5 it's it's fairly laid back um, it, the sound doesn't seem like very special like when you pop into ear oh wow I haven't heard this before but it, it is there it when you compare to a b testing with a normal like iphone source you can really see okay there is distinct distinctive quality in the music coming from i5 compared to a general iphone or any other phone with like some mediocre dax inside compared to the idsd the idsd is like fantastic it because it's more of a desktop class stack amp it is much better than the i5 it also gives the neutrality and the the detail of the music is is more pronounced in here compared to the i5 i5 don't don't get me wrong the i5 is still pretty detailed and excellent for that value what, what this particular digital audio player is for example um in the song come away with me by nora jones the symbols in the beginning starting of the song they're dancing uh, subtly in the back for the idsd but if you're trying to hear the same thing on the i5 you're feeling that okay i'm not able to hear that 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 technical detail in the song but it gives you a f more smoother laid back music throughout the journey which is not bad it's pretty good relaxing um dap we got over here when i'm playing dsd songs i think the native dsd decoding is like fantastic really at par with even high-end uh, top of the line uh, dabs we have seen in the past like castell and kern i would say it's very close to it in terms of the dsd audio quality quality decoding i've used the bon jovi this feels right uh, dsd album for this part review purpose and uh, the album is very well uh, mastered and this the sound stage feels really wide and the depth of the headphones is actually showing up in really full potential the dynamic range across the spectrum is also well distributed there is no complaints there the treble is there but it's well mixed along the entire uh, frequency range one good thing about this dap is it's not sensitive to the source music files what we mean, mean by that is some dabs like if the source has a lot of noise or dis disturbance or any anomalies in the music it picks up really well and then it will be a bad listening experience but where is this dap uh, smoothens out everything and filters out all the um, any issues with the digital music and gives you a pure uh, musical enjoyable experience so i guess i've said enough about the musical qualities of the dap not sure if you want to know more anything extra on in terms of the musical side of it but with campfire audio apart from the background noise it, the entire in-ear monitor opened up like a charm which is excellent i think and the cost of this dap is 499 us dollars at this point of this review i'll leave a link down below the video so that if you want to buy it you can go ahead and buy from amazon so concluding this video review i think it's a very good value for money for this price this dap is excellent and compares with the top of the line dabs as you can see and Astral and Kern is just producing more expensive dabs again and again with AK380 copper and all down the line. The main question I ask every day is it just worth it? Can't I just not use my phone and use cipher cable or something to get a similar output music quality? But these dabs over there, you don't have to depend on your phone. The battery life is decent enough. You have all your music stored there and you get excellent sound quality for this bang for buck price so no issues with that just few some grievances with this particular product which i would like to highlight no optical output no balanced output which we have seen in the n5 i guess there was some cost cutting there and just the major gripe about this is the background noise and if the treble was a bit more pronounced and more more sh shining up across the spectrum i guess then it would have been a bit more perfect for my sound test Thank you guys for 
watching this video. Stay tuned for the comparison of i5 with the Hi-Fi Man, Super Mini and Mega Mini. Thanks a lot guys.